All right, so I'm out here doing some scouting today. Um, brought a few traps with me in case I find some real good stuff, but uh, just kind of wandering around. Uh, we've got about five or six inches on all these creeks. And so what I'm doing is I'm kind of going through and I'm checking all the bank dens, um, you know, that I know of and seeing which ones are active. Because it's really easy to tell whenever you got ice on, um, you know, whenever you don't, sometimes it's hard to tell. And, you know, up and down these little small creeks, um, a lot of times, you know, we don't freeze up enough that the beavers make a ton of feed beds or feed piles. So, you know, sometimes you're setting, uh, you know, just on a, on a good hunch. So anyway, um, I'll show you what I got here. This is just kind of one good way to know. Um, coming up on this feed bed here, or this bank den here, rather. Um, it's pretty obvious there's something going on here, but I've trapped this same house, you no, know, probably for the last six or seven years. And some years it's dead, and some years it's not. Um, this year, there's beavers in it. Obviously, you can see right there's their entrance, and uh, you can see all the air bubbles where they're going in and out. Another good way to tell, and I'll just keep the camera on, but if we come up the tall, steep bank here, right here is their breather holes. This is a pretty extensive bank den, um, but you can see we've had cold nights here, and right there and right there, that's all frost built up from uh, the beavers being in there. You know, they breathe in the hot air. It, collects and it turns into frost so this bank den is is very active uh, you know there's there's a lot going on there there's probably multiple beavers in here so it's good uh, I've checked there's several entrances to this bank den but the water is so low that uh, really this one right here is the only one that's being used there's about three or four entrances and this is the only one so uh, we'll set this up and this is kind of one of them, you hear me talk about the 100% sets. These guys got more or less one way in and one way out and we're gonna stick a 330 in front of it. Right. So uh, one little quick tip, because especially this winter here, there's probably a lot of you guys out there that's gonna be able to uh, potentially trap beaver under the ice for the first time. Here's a little tip for you. Uh, right now, got there's five, five and a half inches of ice that I'm chopping through. Personally, I like to use an axe rather than a spud bar. I just, more accurate and I can really go with it. But anyway, now we're gonna set a 330 in here. We're gonna set it with the uh, the jaws top and bottom. But we need a pretty good size hole. But one tip here is you can see, instead of just punching through right there like you'd think, dig out the whole area together. That way, whenever you do punch through, you're not chopping into water because if you punch through right here, water will fill up your little bowl area and then you're sitting there splashing water all over yourself whenever it's cold. So go together and then once you punch through then you just gotta go down one side and then the other and uh, good to go. Alright so here's the finished set. Um, I've got a stick going through the levers here and then you can see right down below I've got my stick uh, going through the jaws I keep the trap from swiveling. But the most important thing right here is this stick here. Uh, this stick here is my toggle stick. I've got it wired off to the trap. Um, that way if the beaver does take it you can see you can't get this stick i don't wire it to the end because you can maybe pull it down the hole if it doesn't freeze solid but uh you know you want a toggle stick of some sort so one final thing and you know some say this is not necessary i i think it helps a little like tonight we've got a full moon uh this is clear black ice you can see we don't have any snow if you have snow it's better but one thing i like to do is take these either the snow or some of the chippings and just toss back in that hole there. You're gonna, have, we're gonna have to chip it down out anyway. It's gonna get down to about zero tonight anyway. But what this does is this kind of break up the outline of the trap. Uh, you know, especially on nights where you have the full moon. So, anyway, um, that's the set. By the looks of it, we'll have a beaver here in the morning. All right. So uh, one final thing I forgot to mention. And this is actually a very important. So. These beavers here are hungry. You can see here, there's no feed pile. They are, um, they're coming out of the ice somewhere. I'd, I'd say there's a few open holes left, but these beavers are hungry. Do not use green sticks whenever you set this. If you use green sticks, uh, they're hungry anyway. The first thing they're gonna do is come out, they're gonna grab it and uh, 
bugger up your set. Always use dead sticks for uh, setting all this stuff. All right, we're on to the next one. All right, guys, so uh, checking these sets here today. Um, you can see we had a little bit of snow last night. But uh, anyway, this is the set that I uh, I showed you yesterday making, and I just chopped it out. Uh, and you can see there's pretty good beaver down in there. Um, so I'm going to get the tripod set up, and uh, I'll chop this guy out. I ain't going to be able to get him through the hole here. So uh, and I'll chop him out, and we'll see. Um, as I've said before, there's I got to be conscious about my beavers. So if it's a big one, uh, then I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna pull the set. I'm not. I don't want to catch the little ones if they're in here. So we'll get this guy out, and it looks like it's a pretty good size one. So uh, we'll see. So you can see we had a little snow last night. That's a good thing. Uh, chop this guy out. Down low so I don't hit him. Axe. That should be good enough there. Alright, the camera. Alright. So there he is. Not a giant by any standards, but uh, definitely, you know, a, a two-year-old. So uh, anyway, that's cool. Perfect, perfect catch right behind the ears there. Um, so now we're supposed to get a bunch of rain here. Uh, they're saying we're supposed to get a bunch of rain here in the uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow evening so I don't know how much rain we're gonna get and I don't know if I can get back here usually I canoe back here and now I'm walking because of the ice so uh, I'm just gonna pull this set uh, have a think on if I want to try to take any more out of this population um, and and we'll see but uh, anyway you know under the ice beer it's a lot of work but it's fun it's rewarding seeing that things come up under from underneath the ice is cool so uh, we don't have a lot of snow, but I'm going to use it. Um, for those of you who have a lot of snow and don't know, you can take these beavers, you know, like right now it's about 15 degrees. So, I mean, it's pretty cold. This thing will freeze pretty quick. Um, if you have snow, roll them around in the snow, and uh, it'll actually dry the fur out a little bit for you. So, we don't have much. I mean, like, not much at all, but a little bit of help, you know. So, anyway, get the trap out of here, and we're going to carry on. All right, so I just came over here to where there was just a little bit more snow. Uh, piled it up, and you can see for no more snow than what we had. Uh, it Rubbing that beaver in that snow, it really, really does a good job. So, uh, anyway. Like I said, not a giant by any means. Probably um, in that 30, 35 pound range. Um, you know, two year old. So, anyway. Uh, I'm going to pack this guy out. Like I said, I'm used to canoeing in here, so now I get to pack this guy out a long way, which is another reason why I'm not crazy about doing all this right now where there's ice. So, anyway, get loaded up and head out. 